Good morning, church. Good morning, church. How are you feeling? Great. Uh, it's nice that you are here. And uh, so even if you have been here for a thousand times or just uh, the first time, so do feel welcome to this church. My name is Fabrice, one of the pastors of this church. We have uh, a wonderful Sunday uh, ahead of us. Pastor Yane is going to preach for us, for us and let's give him an applause. We are also going to celebrate the uh, baptism today, and so let's also uh, applaud those uh, candidates. And uh, there's a lot happening. My name is uh, Sophia. Uh, I heard uh, all the uh, adults saying uh, good morning, but uh, can we hear the children saying good morning? Can I hear it? It's great that you guys are here. So you will be here for 20 minutes, and then you have your own church service. Uh, and uh, I'm actually uh, actually want to be with you guys because you are going to hear some uh, a person uh, about a person's soul. And uh, so I uh, really look forward to uh, uh, today. And uh, but now I think that we shall stand up and we shall read today's uh, Bible text from John. 21 and verse 15. When they have eaten breakfast, Jesus said to see Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to them, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to them, to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said uh, to him, Yes, Lord, uh, you know that I love you. He said to him, Fee, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was uh, grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he answered, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. And most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you uh, girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke uh, in order to signify in which way he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. So let's uh, fix our eyes on God this morning and let's follow him.
of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every, worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for uh, the work of reconciliation. You are the Lamb that was slain for our sake. Thank you for the salvation that we have in you. Thank you because we belong to you and for what you have done. And uh, maybe we forget what you did, uh, but we want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus because you are wonderful and you have given everything and we want to give everything back to you in gratitude as a thanksgiving for all the things that you have done you are so good we lift up your name we pray that your name will be uplifted in this dark time we pray that your salvation and the gospel will reach further out into this broken world we pray that uh, you will come to our country. You will come to our country. You will lift up the things that need to be lifted up 
and your light shall shine in darkness. We pray for our country. We pray for the entire world that we live in. We pray for all those places where the war is、uh, raging, where there is hunger, where it, where we pray that you see. How people suffer, and especially those suffering believers. We lift these up now, and we pray on their behalf that you will come into their situation. You will be with them. You will give them your grace. Come, God, come with your life and your light, grace and peace. Your peace, in Jesus' name. We、um, lift up our missionaries who are sent out to different places. We pray that you will be with them, and they shall have everything they need, and you will be close to them in their daily、uh, lives. We also pray for every church and every Bible school connected to us.、Uh, we pray, God. You will raise up people、uh, in a time like this. You will raise up churches、uh, that will stand strong and, and firm and、uh, do what you want to do in this time, so that the gospel can reach further out. We pray for that, for your work, for this time. We also want to lift up Israel. This、uh, promised、uh, land. We pray for your blessing and your grace. You see the difficulty that they are in. We pray that you will come with、uh, life and、uh, salvation and、uh, comfort. We pray for blessing over your people. We pray for blessing for the Jews and the Arabs. We pray, God, that your name will be glorified in that place. Which is so important in Jesus' name. Jesus, we thank you. Let's reach out、uh, with our hands、uh, to these prayer requests. These are not just the prayer requests. These are people with、uh, cancer. There's a four-year-old、uh, in hospital in the lung machine. There's a father who has been sick with cancer. And they don't know where to、uh, where to turn. Maybe you are also here. You have a diagnosis、uh, in different ways. But、uh, but let's stand together.、Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, we worship you for every one of those who have been、uh, praying for these people. People in this room. People in this、uh, represented in this folder. We pray for your intervention for all those who are sick. We cry out to you. You are the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We pray that you will come over these people with your powerful work for all those who are sick. We cry to you, come over them with signs and wonders. You will touch the sick、uh, in our midst. We pray for this four-year-old. You will touch this child. In Jesus' name, we pray for the sick father. You will touch him. We thank you. You see every single soul which is in this room or which is in the hospital. You will touch everybody who are in need of your touch. We thank you for this healing. In Jesus' name, we pray. We pray for everyone here. Those who know you are those who know you not. You are worthy of our praise, all the honor and all the praise. We give all these to you. May these prayer requests be turned into prayer thanksgiving, and we pray in your holy name, in Jesus' name. The whole room says. The whole room says.、Uh, So let's give God an applause for the things that He is doing, and、uh, He has saved us. We can be thankful for that. He has taken you here, and we can be thankful for that. Say hi to someone, and then you may be seated. It's so great to. Be gathering for the church service、uh, every Sunday.
uh, sometimes we forget how great uh, this, I this is, but thank God for that. And this Sunday, we do not uh, finish uh, uh, the church service uh, here. We have also a special uh, visit from uh, from Samuel and Kamansia, who is the founder of uh, Shava, an Israeli organization for the inclusion of uh, people with handicap. This is a group which is well known and they have a great impact. So they are going to have an exposition in the orangery. So after the church service, you can just go out and look at their exposition. And then uh, 1.30, there will be a seminar at the back of the um, under the balcony. So take some figure and come and come here for this uh, very interesting uh, seminar. And then let me remind you. So one thing uh, next the Sunday uh, after the church service, we have a uh, parents meeting. And uh, I uh, always uh, admire you guys who are uh, parents. I have no experience, but uh, this is not easy. So you can we can meet each other. We can give uh, T tips and inspirations to each other. So next Sunday, you need to register yourself. It's for free, but you can register uh, by the uh, via the church app, church center app. Uh, I'm sure someone knows about this app, and uh, you can uh, register there. If you cannot do that, you can go to our home page, uh, cl click the calendar. You can cl follow the link there. And uh, then you can also see all the other things taking place in this church. Great. Uh, let's continue always and uh, uh, let's continue to draw inspiration from uh, maybe you have children or maybe you have people. Uh, 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 so we can all be parents in different uh, uh, ways. Uh, so let's continue to, uh, uh, to stand with the parents and stand up for those who take care of the children. And uh, everyone says amen. So there's a lot happening in the church. Let's uh, take a look. Don't believe that it's over. Your diffi most difficult time is the beginning for God. So Philip, you have chosen to follow me. And you have said that you want to have me. And, uh, and then I say, I shall have you. And uh, Jesus comes and uh, he, he uh, saved my life, forgave my sins. And I tr tried to pray. I thought, there's nothing I can lose. And, uh, but then he did a miracle. So it's important that you come back to God. You say, OK, I humble myself. It's uh, time to go back to uh, square one to let's worship God. And uh, he, he's a God that loves us long above what we deserve. So the, this is the theme for this year's Open Arm Conference. Welcome to Livetswood, uh, 10, to the 10, 10 to the 12th of May. So I believe, as you saw, so the 10th to the 12th of May, it's a conference which is organized so that we can go back to uh, the foundations. Uh, to So this is going to be a weekend full of <coughs> miracles <coughs> and also a lot of uh, fellowships. So if you know a lot of young people in this country, then invite them. This is the occasion for us to come together. Uh, so we don't need to do a whole lot of things, but uh, first and foremost, we need to be Martha and Maria. We can choose. We can choose to sit uh, at Jesus' feet and listen to him. And I think that I will choose to be the Maria. We will just sit and listen to what God has to say. So this uh, weekend, we have been praying for this weekend, longing for this weekend, and uh, God has something to say that might resound through this generation. Make sure that you invite people that you know, people who have not been to the church for a long time. But uh, in this room full of uh, praise and worship, we will, s we will see what God is going to do. So the 10th to the 12th of May. So now I leave the, the word to the baptism uh, to uh, Carl Gustav Severin.
I will not uh, baptize him. So it's his uh, grandchild that will be baptized. It's a fantastic, uh, uh, fantastic thing. Uh, Jacob Rosenblatt. And uh, parents, could you please stand up? In a children's uh, in a children's camp, he received Jesus. So they live in Umio. They uh, they rang uh, said, uh, uh, "Can they come here?" And they feel like, uh, "Is that true? You want to?" Uh, and this is just a fantastic, uh, uh, fantastic day uh, to be a part of this. And I've seen Jacob when he was born, and uh, this is uh, so great. Let's uh, let's pray, for, uh, bless and pray for Jacob. Let's reach out with our hands. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that uh, that the heavens are open. Uh, which is looking down upon us, and you are here. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you for Jacob. We thank you, Lord, that that in this way he will be baptized in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord that the Holy Spirit will be with us this moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This means so much for Jacob's life. Thank you, because you have a plan for his life. Not just a ceremony. This is a stamp, a seal. Uh, that he now belongs to God's kingdom. You've got a plan for him. He will testify to his friends about you. He will be speaking uh, a lot uh, about you. Thank you. There shall be a power coming over him. In Jesus' name, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we have pray. Uh, so who is your Lord, Jesus Christ? So based on the commandment of our Lord and your confession, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Shanti. How long have you been saved? Two months. He was uh, saved uh, during one of our outreaches in the city. But you didn't know that. So this brother, he was the one that brought him to faith. So we invited him to the uh, soup kitchen. So we have this uh, kitchen in Gotsunda. Uh, we we uh, shared something. So I asked him uh, uh, that evening. So so Shanti was there that, uh, that evening. We 
Uh, so, and I testified uh, uh, who was Jesus for me, and he was really touched, and also many others. Shanti, who is your Lord? Jesus Christ. Based on the commandments of our Master and your confession, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we have decided, haven't we, to follow Jesus. It's so great. We shall take up today's offering. This will go to the, uh, the work of the church. So Levitzwood is a local church. Uh, so we have a um, international calling, and not just for Uppsala, but also we do, uh, uh, Uppsala is a spiritual uh, home for us. And, and it's so great to see this baptism. Um, so we want to be a church, church for Uppsala. We want to be the salt and uh, light, uh, not just in this city, but here we will continue and uh, and grow and develop and be better. Uh, so it's not just a few of us uh, who work. We do this together. Every member of the body uh, does its part. So we are different uh, members. We have also different tasks in different parts of the country. We have also a lot of difficult situations in the country. And Jesus is the answer to those things. You just heard about God Sunda. And this is a way of, uh, through the social outreach, we can present to Jesus in those areas. And uh, in the same time, we reach out in different places in Sweden, just like uh, uh, Sebastian Stuck said, he has got this organization called Heart, and uh, involving many churches uh, running uh, uh, campaigns uh, together with uh, Rune Boyce. Uh, so it's a very exciting uh, enterprise. Um, we have also a task here in Uppsala in, in Sweden and also out in the world. So today it's uh, six months since Hamas uh, carried out their uh, Basti uh, Bastille uh, um, attack. I thought, what should I use for the, uh, what, what word can I use? I thought, this is more than cold-blooded. This is bloodthirsty. This is uh, Bastille, uh, Bastialis. This is such an evil uh, way of uh, torturing people. It's so terrible. Uh, the goal was to just, just, which caused this terrible situation right now. So during the Holocaust, which was 70 years ago, so the Jews said that uh, you cannot exist. So the Hamas attack against Israel six months ago is also their way of saying you have no right to be here. In uh, So we have other plans for you guys. So it's very important that we stand up for Israel and uh, so that uh, they can live uh, peacefully in their own uh, uh, boundary. So I, I ran into a, a book called uh, Jerusalem uh, Prayer Breakfast, and this is organized in different places, not just in Sweden, in all parts of the world, actually. Christian leaders and Jewish leaders, uh, politicians and co-workers are gathering and pray for Israel. And, uh, and so this took place in Stockholm last week. So we have Albert, and uh, he, so could you please uh, stand up? Let's give them an applause. God bless you. So I almost spoke uh, Russian. I, I, I try to keep to one language. So we have the uh, uh, task uh, locally, but we also need to reach out to other parts of the. So in this, in the next week, so we'll be uh, uh, going to. 
to uh, uh, Albania for our uh, Europe uh, network. We'll be going there Wednesday. So there will be 200 who will be traveling there from all of Europe, uh, not just the uh, main pastors, but also even youth leaders. And we want to build uh, forward, and that's why uh, I think it's very important. So all of that is taking place under the same uh, roof. Uh, we do not become weakened because we are uh, stronger outside. Instead, uh, we strengthen each other. We can be like this Antiochia church. We can be very powerful, outreaching, uh, but also reaching out to our own cities. Uh, and also, uh, we can also uh, uh, widen God's uh, task for us. Uh, or just like uh, what we read uh, when God said, uh, set aside Paul and, uh, and Barnabas. So the blessing which was uh, in our home quarter can be also planted elsewhere. And so we have been doing this, we shall continue to do that. And uh, so I believe uh, in a powerful uh, local church where your family and you can feel really at home blessed and, uh, and uh, you and I, we can grow in the Lord. So let me read a word from uh, Ephesians 4:16 uh, about the church. So the whole body is joined together, held together from the support every joint offers. So every single part receives its growth and is built into a uh, so this is a very beautiful verse, and uh, it's about the fact that God has organized everything. Uh, and, it's, uh, and we together, we grow in love and, uh, and uh, uh, through every part of the body uh, assisting the common cause. So if you are assisting with something, uh, I would like to say thank you. Thank you that uh, so be blessed. So let us continue to do that, and uh, it's not just uh, financial uh, means, but of course uh, uh, the, the offering that we give uh, shall go straight uh, into uh, the local church work. We thank you, God, that you've called us together. You have called us into the world, into God's kingdom, into your church. We want to truly be that church that you have planted uh, and planned us, uh, designed for us to be, and so we can walk deeper and uh, and more powerful in your calling, both here in Uppsala and also out in the world. With in, in Jesus' name, we shall take up this offering, and as usual, uh, you can uh, give via Swish or Whips if you are Norwegian. If you are following online, you can go to our home page and you can click give a gift and you can fill out the amount you want to give. So, um, amen. If you have cash, you can, uh, you can give uh, uh, the cash on your way out. Thank you. God bless you. And uh, afterwards, we shall stand up and praise the Lord. After you have given your gift, uh, let's stand up.
Lord, we exhort you, we exhort you, we thank you, we praise you, we lift our hearts to you. Lord, we thank you because every church service, the depth, the height, and uh, the, the breadth of every church service is about worshiping you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you, hallelujah, we thank you. We give ourselves to you, all of our circumstances, all the things that we struggle with in life, all the things that occupy our mind. We lay down everything in your hands. We praise you, your, praise your name. We thank you, Father, because you are our good Father. You are the best, the greatest. The fa you are the Father that can perform miracles of salvation. We praise you, Jesus, because you are willing to go the path of the cross. You are willing to die on the cross. You are willing to die and to resurrect for, in order to give us life. We thank you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Praise be to your name. Praise be to your name. We rejoice. We rejoice in you. Hallelujah. Praise be to your name. And uh, now uh, our hearts can be so full of so many things, so many circumstances. But now um, we take this church service uh, and we lay down our ha heart and all the circumstances. We put these. Uh, before your face, we fall on our knees and we say, we worship you, we worship you, we give our life to you, we praise you because we can give ourselves to you and we can live, live uh, of you, in you and through you. We praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give Jesus uh, an applause. Hallelujah. We praise you. Praise be to our Lord. Please be seated. And so I'm happy, so happy that I can look at you uh, from this uh, this perspective, so that you don't just see my back as I uh, as I sit on the first row. Now I can uh, look at you, all of you. So I'm very happy that uh, Carl Gustav. So he, uh, so all of those who are baptized, all or the two persons who were baptized, um, it's so great. Uh, so I should actually uh, preach about the baptism. Maybe you thought it was 40 years ago uh, or 70 years ago when I was baptized, or maybe 60, 50, uh, maybe for you, 35 years ago, so, something like that. And then I thought, but baptism, uh, but then uh, it's not, uh, I have a message for you. The baptism is something that can fix you to Jesus. Some, tether you to Jesus, something that you and I, we carry our entire life. It's not something uh, something nice we see in the church uh, or we can show it, but the baptism is based on the commandment of Jesus. I've got 38 Bible verses. Uh, okay, I, I can show, uh, a lot, not 38. So it, this is based on the commandment of uh, Jesus, we baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And different churches have different views of the baptism, uh, different uh, theological perspectives. 
and uh, I, together with the church, pa uh, pastors of this church, we respect the churches, uh, we respect your theology in your church, uh, maybe you have different perspectives, uh, if you are baptized as a child, uh, or maybe you, you weren't even aware of that, but you live in your baptism, I, I have respect for that. I have nothing against, I'm not trying to debase, uh, cut your, I'm not trying to cut off your head. Uh, it doesn't matter what you believe in a baptism or how do you stand in terms of a theology, it's okay, uh, I have full respect. We can, no one of us can say 100% uh, we know everything about the baptism. None of, none of us can say, I know exactly, and also the correct place. Uh, this is in my uh, uh, bathtub. Or maybe the correct place, uh, or this way or that way, or you should say these words or those uh, formula. But uh, do know that Jesus commanded us to say, uh, and we also see very early uh, in the uh, epistles, the apostles' the epistles, uh, they gave us uh, certain uh, guidelines that are important to follow. And uh, if you, it was a very long ago, a long time ago that you were baptized. Uh, but your baptism is still very much present because there is a blessing and strength. So as you wake up every morning, as you are attacked or depressed or sad, remind yourself of your baptism when, uh, when God just uh, embraced you and, uh, and you are st uh, living in the power of His resurrection. Uh, in the power in which Jesus rose again, um, when Jesus came down to the grave and he rose again. And uh, it's not uh, some external, exterior signs uh, or as you were at the baptized and arose from the water again. But there is certain reality. We know that the salvation can be about many things, but the baptism is the guarantee of a hundred percent one one thing which is very, very important. Amen. So we shall read the Bible verses. So if you go, uh, if you have your Bible, uh, maybe you have your mobile phone or iPad. I got a new study Bible. So, so, so there was someone who uh, was uh, responsible for the uh, for the publishing house? He gave me uh, this Bible, and I'm not going to uh, divulge his name. So we have a perfect Bibles out there for sale. We sell, we sell Bibles because we believe in the Bible. We believe in God's words, and uh, this word carries us through everything in our life. When we uh, when we are on the high places or when we are in the valleys. So there is something in the scripture that can lift you up. So so lift up, lift up your Bible a little more. If, you, if it's a Bible, okay, hold up your mobile. And then you can throw your mobile on the stage. Uh, no, I'm, I'm joking. So, so let's go to Matthew. So because of my uh, one-hand mobility, I have, I have written all the Bible verses down. Let's go to Matthew. We have uh, a number of Gospels Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they uh, give us a historical picture of Jesus. And uh, when Jesus called the first disciples, uh, the apostles, the 12 uh, apostles, 
we also know that uh, the scriptures are not written for back then, but uh, we live with these scriptures 2024, and uh, we take this to our heart. Uh, we also see that what Jesus taught 20, uh, 2,000 years ago is still relevant today. There are certain certain people they are uh, they tend to say that uh, it's too old fashioned uh, we are going forward in time these are old time stuff maybe we should not get stuck with but no we hold on for all eternity even after when we go to heaven uh, we will not forget all this stuff and now we can say we can throw away the bible um, no no we take we our, we, our Bible with us in heaven. Amen. So in Matthew 28. Before we read that, uh, let me uh, go through this quickly. I have three points. So baptism based on the commandment of Jesus, number one, if you uh, take notes, bapti baptism based on the commandment of Jesus, uh, point number two, baptism is the place of power and uh, freedom. If there is something that can convey to you uh, as you step into this baptism a grave, as you get into water, as you were baptized. Uh, well, we believe in the biblical way of uh, baptism in water. We do not believe <laughs> in uh, a baptism in milk or, or, or skim milk, but water. So this is a place of power and freedom. And point number three, and also this is a joy and fellowship and calling into the church because we will also see that uh, the first disciples and the first pastors or the first leaders were baptized. They baptized many, many people who came to faith. And these people were then uh, incorporated into the fellowship. So as they prayed together, and uh, they uh, they uh, came to the church service together, and when they praised the Lord together, when they uh, listened to the preachings, so th so there was something that they have in common. Of course, uh, belief in Jesus and all that stuff, but also the gift of the baptism. So. Uh, baptism is not something that we do because it's cool or something that the church all, uh, has invented so that uh, we can look cool with the new Christians. No, baptism is something which is given to us of by, uh, by the Lord. And all that are given to us by the Lord are fantastic. And... Uh, and this is something that is going to endure your entire life. Only if you are an inch away from uh, the heaven. So that's something. That's something you can carry your whole life. It doesn't matter. Uh, something that can carry you uh, the rest of your uh, life. So. Um, uh, in Matthew 28, from verse uh, 18, 19, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them. Baptizing them. Uh, it's only written once, but I repeat it. Baptizing them in the name of the Father 
out of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let's remember that uh, what was said by our pastors or our leadership in the church as they were uh, baptizing, I believe that uh, this is a very important point, point in the pastoral calling in the church fellowship. Uh, part of the uh, callings of the pastors and their, uh, 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 their duty. So if you are sitting here, maybe you were baptized 70 years ago. Maybe you thought, okay, I don't need to be baptized. I know Jesus as my Savior and Lord, so the baptism is just something else. Uh, I would like to say to you that let yourself be baptized because this is going to bless you and the heaven will give you a kiss as you step into the burial, uh, 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 the, the baptism uh, grave. And you're going to have a, a wonderful life. So let us, we as a church, let's believe uh, in this baptism as we pray with someone about salvation, just as we have seen uh, this is such a wonderful uh, evidence or maybe a con confirmation for my preaching, namely someone came to faith and we lead them forward to the baptism and because this is a part of our Christian life and this this is very, very significant because Jesus said this to his uh, first apostles and first uh, disciples. He said, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and so it's important we can not just say uh, we baptize you in the name of Xing Shang or whatever. Uh, these people say whatever formula uh, there can be there can there can be all, all sorts of uh, strange uh, things but let me emphasize that the most important thing to think about the most important that we know of or we understand is that um, we can baptize based on the commandment of Jesus and because baptism is his commandment and also we baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And uh, that's something that we, uh, we uh, hold on to, and uh, for it's important, and, and something that we live according to, uh, something that we can, we understand, we can interpret, uh, as Jesus, uh, the, the, the words of Jesus to the first generation pastors and church leaders, and that's still the same calling that he extends to us today, namely to baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so it's so great that we can be baptized in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. What a strength! Uh, there's strength in, as we call, evoke the name of our God, uh, uh, God in His three uh, triune God, uh, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's why we, uh, we speak uh, as we baptize in this way. So the second one, that's in Mark chapter 16. So this is also still under the first uh, uh, tit the subtitle. Uh, this is uh, the commandment of Jesus. So Mark 16. It's so nice to uh, thumb through my new Bible. I have not written anything uh, or, or underlined everything. And this is so pure. Thank you, Jesus. It's so nice with new Bible. It's, you already have a Bible. Buy, buy a new one. You can never have too many Bibles. Oh, I'm going to buy a new car. Uh, buy a new Bible first. 
You can have as many cars as you want. Buy a new Bible as well. In Mark 16, verse 15, and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And uh, we see that Jesus uh, mentioned faith and baptism. We can see and we can understand that uh, faith and baptism are uh, hand in hand. There is something in the baptism that can uh, impart, impart uh, the salvation. So what exactly that is, no theologian can answer that question. We do not know what it is. Uh, but we understand that, uh, so Jesus continued, went on to say that uh, he who believes not shall be condemned. So you cannot just baptize or and, and then say, okay, uh, now I'm in heaven. Uh, no, you have to, there has to be a, an active belief uh, that you confess Jesus as your Lord and that you receive him into your heart in and then you live in accordance with him and uh, walk with him and do and do the work of faith it can be evangelized it can be praying or it can be exhorting him worshiping him and so forth but uh, we understand that the baptism somehow is connected to all that but exactly how i don't know no uh, sorry <laughs> Uh, but uh, I cannot say uh, that I understand this exactly. There's nobody who can say, okay, it's only faith. No, the baptism is only about getting into the water so that it, should, it look, look good. No. So if that's your picture of the baptism, or uh, maybe um, this can be a free church uh, perspective, whatever, uh, but then uh, try to change this view because the baptism is so much more. You cannot say that I believe in the baptism, and it's only an exterior a sign upon the fact that you have received the faith so that you can show to other people. No, as we step into the water for baptism, as we are submerged, as we are submerged in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, something took place inside of you. It's not just exterior or ex uh, something uh, in the church or in the uh, in the baptism uh, uh, grave, but something else uh, reached from the heaven to us, to our heart. So there's something important, mis mysterious, and you can be happy that you can carry this baptism and its blessings with you and uh, and all its power and the strength and its uh, presence the, uh, you can carry all that the rest of your life amen let's go to the second point the baptism is a place of power and freedom let's go to uh, uh, let's go to romans Who has written uh, Romans? Paul. So Paul, I promise you, Paul was baptized. He was baptized because he has a very clear uh, understanding of, and also a heavenly understanding, and he taught this uh, perspective. So in the Bible, there are two baptisms which were emphasized. One is the baptism in water and also in the Holy Spirit. So uh, perhaps uh, in our circle, 
you think uh, that uh, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is about speaking tongues. That's part of the fruit of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But let us also understand that the baptism in the Holy Spirit is wider, is uh, broader, deeper, and higher, and more than just speaking tongues. So the speaking tongues, that's a fantastic uh, gift. There is such a strength and a blessing to be able to speak in the Holy Spirit and also to speak in, uh, to pray in tongues. That's awesome. But the prayer in the Holy Spirit is more than speaking tongues. Uh, to pray while full of the Holy Spirit, you can pray in every language Russian that you almost heard Christian. Uh, uh, he almost uh, s uh, spoke that. Uh, so uh, whichever language that, uh, uh, that you want to pray in, uh, there is going to be a blessing. You can pray in the language that you speak. You can also speak in tongues. And that's all awesome. And uh, it's about uh, uh, expressing to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, with the power of the Holy Spirit. So maybe you are thinking, it's only a certain who are called. No, but you are also called to pray, to pray, to pray for Uppsala, and also to pray for Sweden and also the world and to also pray for uh, Israel uh, in the current situation and also all the people who are suffering uh, because of the war and people who have lost a child, a wives, family. Let's uh, carry these people in our heart and let's lift these people up. Pray for your neighbors. No, 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 you, you don't know what my neighbors are like. Terrible people. That's great. They're, they're great people. Maybe, okay, once in a while. Yeah, but you can still pray. Uh, you can invite them. Let us uh, read uh, Romans chapter 6. Uh, baptism is a place of power and freedom. Paul uh, taught us the following. Verse 4, Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in the new newness of life. So, what we can say uh, here is that uh, in the baptism, as we are submerged in water, and uh, as you step out of the water, it's not a physical uh, symbolism of the resurrection power, but actually you partook of the power of resurrection through the baptism. No, it's not. It's only just physical. No, no, no. I don't. I disagree. No, that's not what's written here. Here it's spoken very clearly about spiritual things, things which are so much deeper than the uh, than what we can see with our physical eyes. There are things taking place for those who are baptized here, those two brothers who were baptized. There are things happening, there are things falling down from heaven straight into their heart. What a blessing. So I was baptized in the, in the swimming pool. So you can be uh, jealous of that. That's uh, something. No, I also want to be baptized in the swimming pool. But 
I hope that we can do this a few more times. You just need to be baptized once. So I was in Israel. I helped uh, uh, out with baptism. There was this person who was baptized for 10. He said, I want to be baptized 12 times because I have to be baptized for every tribe, Israeli tribe. So in the Old Testament, we have 12 tribes, so I have to be baptized 12 times. I said, no, actually 10, that's enough. You are baptized once, it's enough once. It doesn't matter if you have, uh, uh, maybe you have uh, fallen away from God, maybe you have uh, slid into the world, you've lost your faith in Jesus, then you come back, now you think, oh, I have to be baptized again. No, you can confess your faith, but the baptism is there. It, it's something that you carry with you. There is a power that uh, protects you and uh, and can uphold you and keep you closer to Him so that you can find your way back. There is uh, an, such a power as you were baptized. I believe uh, we here, we pastors here, uh, we as we serve in this church, we believe that the baptism that's once, it's, uh, it's already powerful enough. It's a uh, already sufficiently full of Jesus, full of the presence of the trying in God. So we need to, uh, need only one baptism. So let's go to Colossians. Chapter 2. Let's read together. Let's read the uh, the things that uh, take place during the baptism. So we are circumcised in Him, not with human hands, but with uh, with the circumcision of Christ, as we. Uh, disrayed our, our sinful nature and uh, buried with him in the baptism. What uh, what a significance! We see the picture of the baptism in the Old Test in the Old Testament, uh, namely circumcision uh, and walk through the the red the, the Red Sea and also the 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 Ark of the Covenant. So the Bible says that they were saved through water. We can see foreshadowing of the Christian baptism already in the Old Testament. But in the Old Testament, uh, we see a, a, a circumcision, but the circumcision is no longer physical, but uh, now it is uh, to be buried in him in the baptism. So in the baptism, we have been uh, reawakened by uh, with him through God's power. He who has raised Jesus from the dead. So when you are submerged in the water, and as we are lifted out of the water, so I talk about this all the time. I just because I want to do it. It, it's not just some external sign or, or symbolism. Um, there's the thing about we disrobing our sin, our sinful nature, and we can be revested. We can be we can be resurrected uh, into a clean and pure life. So let's read a few things which I've written here. So in the baptism. Uh, there is healing, uh, freedom from demonic power, and restoration. And uh, 
together with the confession of our faith, the fullness of our salvation is uh, imparted. I don't know exactly how. Nobody can say or which part of salvation or which points or where or which sign. But we know that there are things happening. And uh, here in Colossians, uh, it's written that uh, we are uh, uh, we put uh, put off our sinful nature and bury, be buried and uh, and raised be raised again because the resurrection that's a new life it's a new life that we can be walking in together with the Lord but I can also say that uh, so we can all understand that the salvation the fullness of it does not come only through the baptism. We can not just uh, baptize and say, okay, now I, I, I am set. So now I, everything is in, on autopilot. Uh, no, through the faith which is in our heart and which is uh, growing and de being developed in our heart and as we speak out my prayer and as, as we confess uh, to other people that I believe in Jesus and uh, and that these words and and I uh, I say that I uh, uh, exhort you thank you for the power of the baptism and you can thank God for your baptism every day every morning as you wake up you can say thank you that I wake up I woke up this morning and that you raised me up from the baptism and I can live in the power of the resurrection and also the power of the new life through what came to me uh, in the baptism so maybe this is a new thought for you but rejoice with these new thoughts. These these are good. I promise you. I'm not giving you any um, any f dangerous thoughts. No. Yes, I'm speaking to you because this is important for all of us, uh, for all of us to understand that the baptism is just so much more than the here and the now. It's something that you carry with you even today. So the power of the cross is imparted and in your confession uh, during the baptism. We die away from sin and we are resurrected to the new life and uh, in this the liberating power of the cross has been imparted. So the baptism is a picture uh, also a symbolism of the cross uh, Jesus died on the cross and then he was uh, raised to a new life and the, the baptism is also uh, something about we first dying through the cross and then uh, resurrecting re being resurrected yes. and all that comes to us through the cross through the resurrection in the power of which the Easter uh, delivers to us. All that power is being also delivered to us through our baptism. So point number one was uh, that we do this based on the commandment of Jesus. The second point was uh, that the baptism is the power of uh, uh, place of power and uh, and uh, freedom. Uh, point number three is uh, that's a joy and fellowship in the church. The baptism has to do with uh, the church. It's to do with the church. It joins you up into a fellowship. Let us go to Acts. Chapter 2. So we read from Matthew, Mark, we have read from the Romans, from the Colossians, now we, let's go to uh, the Acts, the book of Acts. 
chapter 2, verse 40. Uh, uh, verse 40 is not in my new Bible. Uh, that was a joke. Um, he has not, uh, my, uh, our publishing house uh, chief has not uh, uh, added anything or taken out anything from the Bible. So 240, and with many other words, he testified and exhorted them. That's Peter who uh, was uh, holding his uh, Easter uh, preaching. With many other words, he testified and exhorted to them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. For those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. Oy. That's a lot of people being baptized. Carl Gustav uh, told the story about. So were you were you with him? There were f seven hundred baptized in, uh, in one go, in the in the river. Uh, was it in the river? Almata in Kazakhstan. Seven hundred. It took four hours. It was also cold. Uh, okay, I am I'm jumbling up uh, the stories. 700 people. Can you imagine that? Baptizing 700 people. Fantastic. Wonderful. You have baptized more than uh, most of us. Uh, so I have a lot of other things to say, but I will um, I will um, abstain. Uh, so uh, the, uh, so it was uh, three thousand people. Uh, then verse forty-two, and they continued steadfastly in the apostle uh, the apostles' tea, doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Uh, we see very clearly uh, who were those that uh, the saved. Uh, okay, and the salvation is about confessing your faith. And what does that did that lead to? It brought them into this new fellowship. What is this new fellowship? Well, communion uh, amongst other things. So the breaking of the bread, and also into the prayer, into the fellowship meaning that they are there they were there in the church and also those churches which were built precisely in the beginning we understand that uh, all those who were baptized became invited into that fellowship and uh, it's not just uh, an external uh, external hallelujah uh, uh, moment but uh, of course, it was hallelujah involved, uh, but uh, but it was not something merely external, but something more uh, more was uh, added uh, with uh, and the, the body of Christ, uh, and namely, and also the church through your faith, your and uh, through your baptism. And you are now joined up uh, to Jesus. You are united with Jesus Christ, the Heavenly One, but also united with the body of Christ, which is uh, the church, your church, and that church that you want to go to, or that church that you want to belong to. This is, these are the place where where the baptism shall join you to the body of Christ. And uh, there is such a joy and a blessing in your baptism. 
uh, namely, you are joined, you are united with the heaven and also united with the church. So uh, let us uh, stand up. Let's thank him for the baptism and for the salvation and thank him for the greatness of all that uh, and all the great things that the baptism uh, 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 implies uh, the things that we have said, we have not said, the things we understand or we do not understand, there is a depth in the baptism that we have yet to discover, which has yet to be revealed to us, but it's all there uh, in, the ha in the heavens. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you for the power of the baptism. We thank you for the blessing of the baptism. We thank you for all that we have done in our life. We praise you. We thank you. So a word of knowledge just came to me. If you have, uh, if you have pain in your mouth, maybe a, a, a tooth, maybe or gum uh, infection in, in the mouth, or it could be, it could be even down in the throat. Thank you, Jesus. If uh, if you have that, uh, you can hold up your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for healing. Put your hand on, on your throat. We pray for the healing power f that we receive, that we can live in. We thank you for the healing power that can flow, flow to every person who is suffering from gum infection or maybe throat problems. Uh, we thank you. Thank you for complete healing, complete healing, complete healing. We praise you and thank you for your healing, for your healing. We thank you for grace, for power. In the baptism and also in the confession of our salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Is there someone here who has got pain in the end of the, the lower back where the the, the back, uh, the, the spine uh, connects to the uh, pelvis and uh, there's something, uh, there's pain in your spine or it can be other places, uh, but uh, that's how I feel. The lower back, the lower part of the spine, hold up your hand. Thank you, Lord. Hold your hand on your back if you have, your, uh, you have problem. We thank you. Release the healing to everybody, to everybody who has got pain in the back. We pray that the pain should go, must go away. We praise you for complete healing, for complete healing. I see a hand in front of me with pain in the fingers, uh, left or right. And maybe this is also to me. I have a terrible pain in my left hand. If you, if you have pa uh, pain in your hand, uh, maybe in the fingers or, or in the, in the uh, joints, in the wrist, uh, because of uh, some reason, if you have pain in your hands, in Jesus' name, praise you. A complete healing. Thank you, Lord, that you heal 
my left hand or the left hand or the right hands we praise you because you heal you heal these hands in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep going but I have to do this uh, this is such clear words of knowledge there's someone who has got knee knee problem maybe one knee maybe it could be a uh, sinew it could be the uh, could be the um, uh, maybe in the uh, knee cap or something uh, uh, some uh, cartilage uh, hold your hands keep your hands on the knee uh, in Jesus name thank you God we need not be afraid of sickness or the things that can happen to our body every day we can receive the healing we praise you for healing and uh, into the knee now right now this morning so knees be healed or all, all the knees be healed in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah praise be to your name for the healing let's give Jesus a warm applause for his healing hallelujah through the baptism through the salvation through the prayers shall the healing come to us let's exhort Jesus okay I'm done the God bless you uh, one more thing we shall have uh, an invitation for the salvation if you are here if you are here at the church service maybe uh, uh, you're a bit lost you're wondering what does that all mean what does that all mean you need to receive Jesus he is here for you I did this uh, many years ago here in Uppsala out in the on street maybe you're a uh, 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 Uppsala boy or girl young middle-aged old now open your heart you shall receive the Lord open your heart say yes to him you can hold up your hand now so let's all bow our heads let's close our eyes thank you Jesus amen amen I see your hand I see your hand you can pray after me we can all pray thank you Jesus for the gift of the salvation for the gift of the cross now we open our heart I confess with my mouth Jesus you are my Lord come and save me receive me I shall receive you in this moment in Jesus name Amen if you pray that prayer for the first time please please uh, go home first of course um, but please come forward and um, talk to me talk to the pastors or um, some counselors who will be here we want to help you in your new steps in the Christian life so I'm done let's praise the Lord
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your love. Thank you for the grace, and, and also we can just be standing in your presence. Thank you because you have saved us. Thank you for the gift of the salvation. We thank you for the gift of the baptism. We thank you because you died for us, and we die with you, and, to, and we are resurrected with you. And the power of the resurrection that is active every day, and we thank you for the healings and the wonders that took place through the baptism and also the, ba the, the blessing that you grant us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Let's give Jesus and Pastor Jan Bloom uh, uh, an applause. Thank you, Jesus. Great. So if you are one of those who received Jesus, we would love to greet you. As Pastor Yana said, come forward. Uh, we have uh, to the, one of the counselors. If you need also prayer, uh, we have a lot of leaders who will be on the left side. We uh, lo would love to help you, to minister to you. Uh, and uh, you are welcome back. Uh, uh, also Wednesday, we have open arms. On the back, uh, back, back part, uh, uh, balcony. So now it's time for us to have some coffee, and so go through the orangery so that you can check out this exposition that this organization Shava has. Uh, so buy a sandwich, and then at 1:30, don't forget the seminar at the back of the balcony. It's going to be very interesting. And also take a look at the bookshop. There are books about Israel and also other edifying material. So uh, have, a, have a, a wonderful rest of Sunday. So let's stand up together as we, uh, before we go home, we shall receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord help you, uh, bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and give you his grace. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace in the name of Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Uh, see you next week.